This is a 4x4 keypad. Simple numeric entry variety. It's got eight wires. I have a couple little kits of parts that I bought because they were, you know, like 34 sensors in one or the beginning electronics kits. And I'm slowly going through them, each piece, and learning how they work. Believe it or not, I've spent several hours on this. But first, let me tell you what this is. So you've got 16 buttons and essentially three layers. The bottom layer and the top layer are separated by some sort of springiness so that when you press the button, you are physically making the two layers contact each other. But normally, they're not in contact. The back layer has wires going one direction. It doesn't matter which one's horizontal vertical, I don't remember, but it doesn't matter. One layer is going to be horizontal, and the other layer is going to be vertical. So by default, none of these wires connect to any of the others. But let's say you press this button here. This horizontal wire, we'll think of it as a row, and this vertical wire, think of it as a column, are both connected. Let me make this a little more clear, because I don't need them coming out both sides. So here is your cable. The eight wires of your cable, four go to horizontal and four go to vertical. So what you do is you would put a power signal on one of, let's say, the rows. So you'd pick this row and you'd power that row. And then you would read each of the four column lines. So if you were pressing this button and you were powering any other row, then nothing would happen. But this row is connected. So you've got power coming in to all four of this row's buttons. And you're pressing this button, which means it's connected to this line, and you can read that line. So what you would do is you would apply power to just one row at a time. Because if you applied power to all four, and then you tried to read this column, you can't tell the difference between those four buttons anymore. You don't know which one's pressed, you just know that one of them in that column is pressed. So you only want to power one row at a time and then read. So you read this row, then this row, then this row, then this row. And you can do it with eight Arduino pins, you can do muxes and counters and, and whatever else. And that's basically all it is. You could also do it the other way. You put a power signal on one of the columns, so you power this column. And then if any of these four buttons are pressed, they will forward that power along to one of the row lines because it connects column and row. It's just It just physically connects the two conductor lines. This is inherently limited. I've, this is what I spend hours on, trying to come up with a way to detect multiple button presses at the same time. Now, it's not really intended for that. You're supposed to just press one button at a time and it works fine. And in fact, it works fine if you press two buttons at a time. So the maximum you can reliably read is two. If you power let's say this row here, this row two, and you're pressing two different buttons on that row, you'll be able to detect that because they're on different columns. The same if they're diagonal from each other. And then if you have two buttons on the same column that are pressed, you can read that fine because you're only powering one row at a time. So you're powering this row, even though you're pressing both, you know this one's down. Because if only this button were down, and you're powering this row, the power couldn't get to this button, because this one's not pressed, which means the column's not connected. So if you power one row and you read that column, and you're getting a signal, you know this button has to be on. So you can read any two. Now that's all you pretty much are going to need to do. It's a numeric keypad. So you're probably ever going to only press one button at a time. But you could also have modifier keys like shift or control or something. As long as you only need one modifier key, you can still do two at a time. It'll work fine. You just can't do more. So that's a limitation. But this is pretty much bare bones simple. This would cost pennies to mass produce. So if this is all you need, just tell the user, well, don't press more than a button at a time. One button at a time. And just anything else is user error, and it's no problem. So let me do a quick demonstration. I'll do it with my little display board. We don't need to go the full Arduino route because it's just software. So I'm using a standard 5 volt supply, and I've got it hooked up so that row 1 is receiving power. And then if I press the first button on the row, that bit lights up the second, the third, and the fourth. If I press any other button, nothing lights up. If I switch to a different row, let's see, that was row three. So now row three is lighting up, one light at a time, and nothing else will light up. And then if I put all four rows powered and try to press buttons on row one, it seems to work, but if I go down a column, one, four, seven, and star, 
are giving all the same signal. This is why you have to power one row at a time, or one column at a time. So you're not going to be able to do this combinationally without fancy logic. It, it wouldn't even be worth it. This is definitely intended for use by something like an Arduino or any other microcontroller. This is the kind of thing you'd find on like, you know, a security door. You have the actual secure internals locked inside the building, and then you could have a dinky little keypad like this taped on the door with just wires running to the microcontroller and it can read them from a distance. Remember, cheap and simple doesn't mean bad. You can have cheap and simple, but still good quality like that. Put your money where it matters. You should always be using the simplest, cheapest design that gets the job done to your specifications. That leaves you more money to spend on something else. So while you go get your black and red pens, I'll be seeing you.